Hello, I'm Ed from Crystal Clear Aquatics and thank you for joining me for another video this morning. It's been a little while since I've posted any content. It's quite a long winter, I don't do an awful lot if I can help it during the colder months. But, 1st of March, meteorological start of spring, and I'm back out with lots of work to do and lots of things to show you guys. I've got a lot of projects lined up for the year, quite a few pond installations. But at this time of year, I carry out my spring servicing, and that's what I'm doing on this pond. Now you might recognise this from a pond that I built uh, two or three years ago. It's nice to come back and to see how these things are establishing. And today I'm carrying out my spring pond service, which entails a few chores. Now obviously all ponds are different. A koi pond or a traditional fish pond would require different maintenance to a wildlife pond. But this is what I would class a standard kind of domestic house pond. A few fish, some wildlife, frogs and newts, lots of plants. And at this time of year we want to undertake a few basic chores like trimming back all of the foliage that remains decaying from the winter months. We've got lots of reed mace here, lots of water forget-me-not which is doing rather well as well which can do with a good trim. Uh, the pond itself is going to have a, a vacuum. There's a lot of sediment and slurry and silt which is built up over the winter months and lots of autumn leaves that are at the base of the pond. We'll hook out some of that. The filtration system needs a good overhaul. At this time of year as the water temperature starts to warm, daylight hours increase, the pond dynamically becomes uh, uh, a lot more volatile. Algae, blanket weed, green water suddenly starts to, to grow in the pond and pond will go through what's known in the trade typically as a spring algae bloom. So at this time of year it's important to make sure that your filtration system if you have one is running in peak performance. So this is a good opportunity to give the filter a really good clean to replace consumables inside the unit such as filter foams and really importantly UVC tubes if you've got one. Uh, making sure that the quartz lead that the UV tube sits in is nice and clean and this is going to help to prevent the spring algae bloom to keep the pond looking good for the summer months ahead. It's also a good opportunity to fertilise some of the marginal plants and the water lilies. Um, you can use liquid fertilisers or root tablets which you can position around the base of the plants. Um, blanket weed treatments as well. Once you've replaced the UV tube within your filter, if your pond water is nice and clear, the sunlight can penetrate much further into the water column and that's going to encourage a lot of the, the hair algae and the muck there's quite a lot of this blanket weed which is just beginning to form. So this is a good time of year now to be adding a preventative treatment to stop this from growing. Now even if you haven't got blanket weed in the pond, it's still a really important thing to do to add some treatment because we want to prevent this from growing entirely. So my kind of spring service that I'll do on this pond will be a vacuum, a partial water change, and I'll take out perhaps 10-15% of the volume of the pond. I'm not going to remove too, too much of the sediment and the silt. At this time of year, this is the 1st of March, we've got frog spawning, toad spawning very soon, potentially newts as well. And they're going to be using the plants and some of the leaf litter and the silt and muck to hide amongst. So if we're too clean and we take out too much of this, we're actually going to detract from some of the wildlife in the pond. So I want to remove some of it so that we're not going to allow the pond to, to silt up and build up with too much debris. But I'm going to leave a few areas of the pond untouched so that I don't disturb any wildlife. It's really important that you need to look out for frog spawn. I mean, if I'm rooting around with a vacuum, it's very easy to suck up tadpoles and frog spawn. I have got a little inspection bag inside the vacuum, which I'll go through and check. And anything desirable, I'll put back in the pond. But we need to be careful of these sort of things. Likewise, fish, they can go up the vacuum as well, so I have to be careful. Um, so silt removal, sediment removal. I'll be trimming back the plants, pulling out a few weeds and bits and pieces, fertilizing the plants adding some treatments back into the pond and then I'll be tackling the filtration system and giving that a good clean. So I've given the pond a light vacuum my equipment of choice, by the way, is the Awaza Pondavac 5. It's a really, really great piece of kit. To be honest, I couldn't do my job on a day-to-day -day basis without it. But I've dropped the level of the pond down, sort of maybe 10, 15%, not too much. Picked up some of the blanket weed and leaves and silt, of which there's not really that much in this pond because it's always been very well looked after. 
and now it's time for me to start tackling the plants. Now we've got a lot of sort of dead decaying foliage left over from last season and if that hadn't have been cut back in winter now is the time to address this and that will allow all the new growth to, to come through which is just starting unhindered. So I'll give all of this thatch and sort of dead foliage a good trim back. Now it's worth noting whenever you're working in a pond, there are secateurs, there are cutters, be very careful looking out for cables. It's very easy to hide a pump cable or some lighting cable amongst the plants or forget that they're there. Um, it's good practice to turn all the electrics off of course before you get in the pond. So I've switched off the filtration and the pond pump. Um, I know where all the cables and bits and pieces are rooted here because I built the pond but it's definitely something that you've got to be vigilant for and be careful. At the same time of trimming back all of the dead foliage, if you come across weeds, grass is a terrible thing for, for getting into the pond, especially in the shallows. And now is a good opportunity to start pulling this stuff out. I have to say, a big thank you to all of my subscribers and viewers over the winter months. I've not posted anything since well, end of October, November time but the subscriber count has increased a lot. So thank you very much to all of my new subscribers. I'm, I'm surprised actually at how quickly the channel is growing. Now we've got some lily pads here. If the lilies hadn't have been trimmed at late autumn, winter, all of this needs to be cut back as well. It seems a little bit ruthless because the pads actually look in reasonable shape, but these are, this is last year's leaf and this isn't gonna do anything. So they're gonna get cut off. And likewise, if you come across any lily flower buds that have lasted the winter months and not opened, trim them off as well. Another month, maybe even less, we'll start seeing some, in fact, here we go, some little pads that will be at the surface very, very soon. So definite signs of spring. This time of year is lovely in a pond if you've got marsh marigolds. The bright yellow flowers, a real quintessential pond plant and a definite sign of spring. They'll be flowering and blooming very soon. Then we've got some Nasturtium aquaticum, some ornamental watercress, and some Myosotis, uh, water forget-me-not here, which has done very well. And this stuff can be a bit thuggish and can really take over in the shallows. It's lovely, I like the softening effect it has on the pond and in the stonework, but it needs to be controlled. And literally with this, you can just pull out handfuls of the stuff. It's not really a plant that can be very well contained. You'll buy it in small baskets and very quickly it'll just send out these runners that flop all over the place. But it's a really easy plant to propagate from. You can just pull out a shoot and a root like this, a little bit of stem, a few leaves, a few tap roots coming off of that, and you can just plant that in amongst the gravel or, or pots anywhere else and that will grow very well. I might keep some of that for some cuttings. But you can afford to be ruthless with these because they will grow back with a vengeance. Again, a lot more grass which is rooted in here. It really is a never ending battle to try and get rid of this. And if you can try and pull out as much of the the root mass now before the rest of the plant plants have established, at least you'll be hoping to win the battle. So I'm going to carry on tidying up all of these plants and then I shall fertilise some of these which I'll show you what I do with those and then it's time to move on to the, the pond equipment and as well as the filtration system of course really importantly we've got the pond pump and that needs to have a good clean. There's a bit of blanket weed and, and muck on here so I'll make sure that this gets stripped apart and given a, a good clean as well right so I've trimmed back all the plants giving them a good tidy and now in the process of topping the pond up you can see here perhaps controversially I'm using water straight from the tap straight from the hose don't be frightened of using tap water in your pond as long as you're only doing partial top-ups no more than at most 25% of the total volume of the pond you'll be absolutely fine using tap water. In fact, there are some benefits in using tap water with some of the buffering capacity that you're gonna get from the uh, harder sort of alkaline water in this area. Of course, I'll condition the tap water, dechlorinate um, what I'm putting in. Even that isn't necessarily essential, but I think it's good practice to do. And whilst I'm topping the pond up, 
I shall start to fertilize the plants. Now I'm using some little root tablets. These are called pond flora tablet food, made by Waterlife. Other products are available. And these are just little root tablets that are rich in iron and potassium that you can push down amongst the, the roots of the plants to give them a little boost for the seasons ahead. Now whether you've got marginal plants or lilies that are in baskets or whether you've got proper marginal zones like this where the plants are bare rooted, the principle is the same. I'll use a, a stick or a screwdriver or if the soil is soft you can just use your finger to push the tablet down close to the root wall and using sort of one tablet per pot this sort of size area, one tablet is, is plentiful. We'll just push that down close to the root ball. Flowering plants like irises and water lilies that will expend a lot of energy in producing flowers for the season ahead will really appreciate a boost of some fertilizing tablets. Up the Lobelia cardinalis here, we've got some pondateria or some pickerel plants which will be coming up shortly. Now you can add these tablets right through the season. Um, in fact the instructions say to do it every couple of months. To be honest I just find during the spring months that's plenty. It doesn't need to be done all year round. It's nice to get back out in the sunshine active again. It's been a very long winter with lockdown this year. Been itching to get out and do something. It's always nice to come back and to, to see ponds that you've built and see them establishing because they change every year and it really takes at least a year for a pond to, to start to establish and the plants have really come on nicely from when this was first built a couple of years ago. Ponds and gardens that certainly don't look their best at this time of year. Although this one is looking in very good shape. But it won't be long before everything is, is overgrown and needs a really good cutback again. Despite the sunshine, it's actually quite chilly today and this water is still rather chilly. There we go. Now whilst I'm in the pond, I just want to point out something quite important. This pond is suffering quite badly with blanket weed for this time of year. Blanket weed will continue to grow right through the winter months, even if it's very cold, albeit stunted and much slower, but it will continue to grow. But at this time of year, it's suddenly going to explode and, and really start to become rife. If you've got borders around the pond, soil, there's always a, a risk of a fresh supply of nutrients being washed into a pond. So it's good practice to try and make sure that you keep the, the borders around the pond well planted to try to hold together the, the structure of the soil so you've not got any loose material that can get washed into the pond. I think adopting a, a no dig policy around the pond can be quite beneficial because again by digging and turning over the soil you're um, turning over it and reintroducing nutrients that could then get washed into the pond. And despite it looking lovely and being good for the, for the borders, compost and mulch like this can be catastrophic for, for ponds in terms of algae. Um, you can be really fighting a losing battle to control blanket weed and green water when you've got manure and compost, mushroom compost and things around the bed. So ideally it's best not to if you can help it. So a couple of other treatments that I'm going to be adding to the pond. One is the cloverleaf blanket answer. Um, I mean this has been a, a fantastic treatment for many years now in the pond trade for controlling blanket weed. For a long time the UK's most popular treatment. There are other products now um, which are apparently as, as good. Awaza make a very good blanket weed treatment that I've yet to try but I will do this season. If you're listening Awaza and you want to give me some by all means chuck it my way. So this is a great product to control blanket weed and to kill it if you've already got it 
And the idea there would be if you've got a problem with blanket weed, to manually remove as much of it first as you can because you don't want to have too much decaying foliage, too much decaying algae in the pond. That's going to deplete the pond of oxygen. So if you're not running uh, a pump or any sort of form of aeration, that can be disastrous if you've got fish in the pond. Um, but also the amount of nutrients that the pond will then start to um, to develop from the decaying algae can in turn cause further algae problems down the line. So you want to try and remove as much of the algae as you can first physically and then what's left treat with the, the treatment. This is a powder. You don't really want to apply it directly into the pond but you want to mix it up in some pond water and then sort of evenly distribute it around. If you've got a clear pond it will look very milky for a couple of days after you've treated but it will settle in clear you might notice a, a kind of a chalky residue on the linings and on the substrate and stones and things but that will settle in clear as well very quickly i know there are some people that complain that this stuff hangs around in your pond for ages undissolved and that tends to be if you just chuck the powder in neat if you do what i'm doing mixing it up in some water into a solution you won't have that problem I find generally three doses a year for most average ponds will control blanket weed. There's lots and lots of products on the market and certainly years ago a lot of the treatments that you would use you'd have to use every couple of weeks or so. Um, blanket weed for me was the, sorry blanket answer for me was the first treatment that I found which would have really long lasting effects and which sometimes even as little as one dose a season would, would control blanket weed all year round. So I would use it as a standard practice, even if you haven't got blanket weed, during the spring months, a good dose in summer, and a good dose in autumn, winter. Now every pond is different, and as I say, if your pond is surrounded by borders and you've got a lot of potential nutrient runoff, you might find you have to treat more frequently. There are some ponds that I'll add it monthly, just as a standard. But generally, three doses a year is sufficient. filtration equipment and pumps ideally they should be running all the time anyway but if you're one of these people that likes to, to switch it off or if you've got just a feature or a fountain that you turn on periodically try and leave it on certainly for the next couple of days as much as possible to help circulate the treatments and to oxygenate the pond as much as possible and another treatment I'm going to use here this is for the benefit of the fish now I'd be cautious about mixing treatments in ponds but blanket answer as a natural product and from years of experience, I've never had any issues. I find absolutely safe to mix with, with most pond treatments. So this is something called FMG uh, mixture, a mixture of formalin and, and malachite, formaldehyde and, and malachite green. It's quite a strong treatment. You've got to be cautious not to overdose, but this is very good at helping to prevent fungal problems, protozoas like white spots and other potential parasites. Um, as the water temperature is starting to warm and the fish become more active, they're more prone to knocking themselves against the side, losing a scale or two, which is their natural defence mechanism, can then lead them susceptible to fungal problems and other infections. And so I tend to endorse sort of a seasonal treatment in the autumn months as the water starts to cool down, and then in the spring months as it starts to warm up. Just one dose, not a course of treatment, but just one single dose, Again, it's kind of a preventative measure to help knock anything on its head. Now this is something that you want to, to dose out carefully. I'm familiar with the product and I'm familiar with the volume of the pond. This has got a very strong dye. It is a strong, potentially dangerous chemical, so I would be always wearing gloves. Now again, this blue dye will kind of dissipate in the pond over the next couple of days. With the filtration running, the pond will soon clear. So the next job for me now is to tackle the filtration. So I'm just tackling the filtration system. Now this pond is running in a Waza Filter Clear 12000, which is a nice pressurised system. By pressurised, I mean it's totally sealed partially buried in the ground here and this filter comprises of a, a stack of 
open cellular foam or filter foam which mechanically and biologically filters the pond and also very importantly it's got a UVC. This is an 18 watt UVC which for a pond of this volume is plenty. The pond is always clear, it doesn't suffer from green water so that's test amount to the, to the UV. Now it's standard practice annually, ideally in spring, to replace these UV tubes even if they're still working and they will continue to run for a few years before they stop working but standard practice once a year in spring because the amount of UV radiation that the tube emits after even six months of use or six months burn time diminishes dramatically and at this time of year when the pond is most likely to go green you want the filtration and the UV particularly to be working peak performance full strength so good practice standard practice to replace these annually during the spring months it's also important to make sure that the quartz sleeve, this, this tube here, is clean and clear because it's pointless replacing the UV tube if this sleeve is covered with obscuring detritus, um, lime scale and, and algae etc which is going to cut out the light so make sure that's nice and clean. So I'm replacing the entire stack of foams on this filter unit. Some people would recommend leaving one of the old foams in place to help seed biologically all of the, the new foams. And that, you know, that is a good theory. There's obviously a lot of beneficial nitrifying bacteria living within this stack of foams. And if you've got a heavily loaded pond, lots of livestock, and you're feeding the pond quite heavily, you don't want to disrupt the filter too much if you can help it. And in that instance, it would be good practice to to perhaps replace half of the foams but at this time of year when the fish are still not being fed or if they are it's only a very small amount of tentative feed and they're not very active there's no issues with replacing all of these foams there's enough beneficial bacteria living within the ponds and within the the mature water in the pond to get this seeded again very quickly so i'm going to replace all of these I'm using genuine Awaza filter foams here. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail with the filtration. If you wanna see how to fully service a filter clear or to replace UV tubes and filter foams, I've got other videos on my channel which you can go and see, uh, which displays, explains it in greater detail. Other than that, that's it for now. The pond is gonna change very dramatically over the next few weeks and, and coming months. And it won't be long before the plants will need a good, a good tidy up and a good check. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I'm Ed, Christian Clear Aquatics. Thank you.